going on? Ryan Falcon right here, set the base triathlon, doing another quick Facebook Live right before the new year for 2021. So hopefully you have a little bit of time, you can uh, join in with me and we are going over some uh, running metrics. Um, a lot of people out there have the ability to capture them either with a uh, Garmin Pod, I think Stripe Foot Pod will get them, or if you use an HRM strap from Garmin, uh, certain specific ones will capture the running metrics and if you get the data and you like to look at it and you don't know what to do with it, I'm kind of going over a few ideas of what you can look for, <clears throat> maybe high level that you can find that can help you uh, with your running form and uh, just kind of, you know, a lot of people are going out there and, and they're running form, they either break down and get injuries a lot or they just can't get comfortable, they can't find a good nice rhythm to get into. So hopefully these things will kind of help you out when you're looking at that. So go over real quick some tips, uh, running metrics, ground contact time. So this is one of the graphics that I've posted several times. But I like to do a Facebook video to kind of go over the, the points a little bit uh, closer. Um, so the ground contact times, the amount of time in each step that you spend on the ground while running measured in milliseconds. So when you take your stride, so that's the time from when you hit the ground with your foot when it actually leaves the ground when you're picking up and doing the pull back into the, the, the recovery motion to swing your leg back out front. So when you're looking at this, you need to keep in mind the experienced runners are around 300 milliseconds. So you're, you're doing a nice cadence, you're not spinning, you know, you don't want to do a hip, drag or a hip dip and you're kind of spending a lot of time on the ground. It's a quick you hit the ground and you keep that cadence, keep it, keep it going. Uh, elite athletes will be looking at 200 milliseconds. So the less time you spend on the ground, the faster you are, the technically more elite you are. Now, I don't want you to think that that leads you into having to shorten up your run stride and being choppy about it. Um, I've done other videos about run form. I like to see people running while leaning at the ankles um, to, to get gravity to pull you forward to kind of forces you to want to take a step ahead um, because if you're leaning too far back, you're doing heel strike and in order to shorten that time or get faster cadence, you're having to do things um, and, and it makes your form choppy and stuff. So form is important to get to that 200, 300 milliseconds. So if you're spending longer than 300 milliseconds, um, you're probably spending too much time with your foot in contact on the ground, if that makes sense for you. So the goal is to minimize the contact time through the whole, whole event that you're doing, your training runs, your anything, you know, with any kind of form tips, the goal is to be able to increase your ability to go further and be less fatigued. Maybe not necessarily get faster, but be more economical so you can actually be faster in the long term. So if you're doing a half marathon, marathon, you know, Ironman race, half Ironman race that 13.1 or 26.2 miles, you may not be faster. You might not have a faster splits, but you'll be more consistent in the splits you can maintain. So your overall time will be faster. So in order to do that, you need to avoid injuries and you want a faster turnover rate. And in doing that, you're gonna spend less time on the ground because you're, you've got a nice cadence and you're leaning forward and it's making you pick up your feet and put them in front of you in order to you know, use some gravity to help pull you forward. So you're getting your cadence out there to help get that your foot out in front so you don't fall over. So that makes sense. Um, you can improve um, by over striding. So, you want to be careful. You don't want to go too far out front to where you're doing a heel strike. Like I said, if you're leaning at the ankles, that kind of takes away the heel strike because you can't really put a heel strike when you're leaning forward at the ankles. But if you're leaning forward at the waist, you can do different things and, and you don't want to go in that direction. So just need to be careful that you're not adjusting your form too much um, in the wrong direction or anything like that. So you can improve with core and hip flexor strength to be more efficient and stave off fatigue. So, you know, all those uh, my athletes or anybody I've done a plan for, I don't stick the strength workouts in as just a place filler or a spot holder or uh, busy work. You know, you, I've got hip flexor routines, I've got core routines, and the better you are at those, the better you will be at being able to pull your leg up and do the proper strides and get them off the ground quicker and not what I call kind of a lazy stride where you spend a lot more time on the ground and you're just kind of barely picking up your leg. You want to be pushing off of the back, bringing it forward, you want to be purposeful in your strides and in doing that you're going to reduce your ground contact time so like i said this is just one of the metrics you know we've gone over a couple different ones so far i'll go over a few more uh, but this is one metric you can kind of measure 
if you go out and you do a run assessment, I've done running assessments and I'm doing them currently for athletes. So if you want a run assessment, uh, send me a message, put them in the comments and I'll get back to you about that. So anytime you make a change, this is something you could kind of measure. You can go back, check out your, your, your ground contact time from runs before, and then check it after you made run form changes to make sure that you're doing the proper things to be able to be more efficient in your run. So if you do a form change and you go back later and you increase ground contact time, probably gonna go back and look at back what you did and see if uh, you've done something wrong kind of in the process. So hopefully that helped you out. Um, you know, and I've done tips of the week where I've kind of spelled out a little bit more in text. So if that helps you out, like I said, I've posted the graphics, uh, but I just wanted to do a video so you can kind of get a little bit more information out of what I put here in the tips. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll get back to you on those. Send me a message. Let me know if you're interested in maybe a, a, a run form analysis. I do them via video. You send them to me and I, I write, do a little write up and then send you possibly uh, some drills and things you can work on to improve your form. So with that, that is my Facebook Live tip of the week. So hopefully you found it informative and happy new year. At the time of this recording, we are December 29th of 2020. So let's hope 2020 has a lot better things coming at us. So we'll talk to you next time.